we knew what we were about to face. This team, they play hard. And it's not a, a team that, uh, you know, you think about playing a record. That's when uh, you get set up and put, you put yourself in position to, you know, lose, lose a game. And I thought you know, our overall approach was great, you know, aside for that stretch late in the fourth. Um, you know, we're, we're, you're fighting human, human nature. Get comfortable, take your foot off the gas a bit. Um, but overall, I was pleased. Yeah, he had a pretty good rhythm, um, and I think pick and roll is his, you know, it's his go-to. So we were able to find uh, find him in those actions, and he's able to get downhill, create for himself and others. Uh, and then Anthony Gill, how did he did he say? He's had just ten minutes, but I assume he's on some sort of restriction or easing him back in. No, we're easing him back in. There's really no restriction, but you know, he hasn't really done a whole lot of five on five. We haven't practiced a ton. Just you know, the density of the schedule um, hasn't allowed for it. So. Um, we have to be cautious with him, but there are no like medical restrictions right now. What were you looking for tonight? Uh, just, just that. I mean, I wanted to see him out there, yeah. <laughs> see how he would respond. Um, you know, his energy, his ball movement, um, those are things you can't measure, but they, they're impactful. What about how Montrez has changed the temperature as soon as he comes in? He's attacking long by the post and really seems to get your bunch going. Yeah, he's a spark plug. You know, it's uh. There's so many names you could give it, but his energy is just uh, phenomenal. It's a different, different pace, different uh, aggression level. His voice, you know, all those things. You know, and it's second possessions, it's rim runs, it's it's blocking shots. Um, you know, it's it's first to the floor. His activity is just, uh, it's amazing, and it's every day. So it, it really is a a welcome thing to have. Uh, I mean, I'd rather be where we are than not, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, you just have to fight that, that temptation to get complacent. You know, I think it, it hasn't come easy, but, uh, and I'll give our guys credit. We've, we found ways on certain nights to just, you know, eke out a win. Um, but, you know, we, we can't sit here and say, Hey, we're good. We, we have to continue to work every day and get better. Uh, you know, try to minimize some slippage, you know, add some things as we go, hopefully get healthy, get guys back. And in doing that, it, you know, it may take a little bit to get reacclimated, but uh, it's the nature of the league. So when that time comes, we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll find ways to get guys back in. Uh, I mean, his, his rebounding has continued, his, his activity defensively, um, I think has been great. Um, and he, I think he's also kind of using his voice to help uh, that, that veteran presence. Um, he's one of those guys, him, Pope, you know, Trez, they played in big minutes, big moments in playoff games. So it's, it's good to have another guy who can kind of just steady the ship. You know, sometimes we get uh, uh, a little scattered and he can kind of help bring us back uh, to where we need to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, several guys do. I think it's great. It's uh. You know, I talked to Denny early, and I said, you got to find yourself a good vet. And thankfully, we have quite a few of them um, and guys who are going to go out of their way to help him, uh, kind of show him the ropes, slow him down a little bit, build him up, give him confidence. And I think that's it's it's shown in the way he's played, the way he's responded. Uh, so I think it's great. Chase. Hey, Wes, uh, you called a timeout. Uh, I think it was 15 to 12. They were leading in the first quarter, and the game really kind of turned around after that. What didn't you like that made you want to call the timeout, and what was the message to the team that kind of flipped things around? Well, it was just the uh, ball movement. I thought we were just kind of lack of days you know, early in the start and just wanted to get that point across that, you know, let's not, uh, you know, fall into that trap of just playing one-on-one and, uh, let's get the ball moving. Let's, let's play with a little bit more pace. Uh, make sure we're setting screens. We're, we're in our spots early because uh, they're a physical defensive team. They're very active. And I give uh, Jamal a lot of credit. His staff, they've done a great job with this group. You know, and I know they got a lot, a lot of young pieces, and those pieces are going to get better. But uh, the one constant is they play hard, and they're going to play to the wire. So it's, it's not a surprise that this team is the number one fourth-quarter scoring team in the league. They're going to continue to play. And, you know, tonight, obviously – 
scored 33 in the, in the fourth, I think, shot just under 50. So uh, they're going to keep coming. And I just didn't like the start and where we were, and I, I wanted to kind of get that point across. And uh, Daniel Gafford, the, the last two games, um, you know, foul trouble tonight, but hasn't really been the guy that we're used to seeing. Uh, anything up with him, do you think? Uh... I don't think so. Um, you know, it's just it's a long season. You know, there's ebbs and flows to the game. There's ebbs and flows, you know, to each player. I don't know too many players who play at a certain level consistently for 82 games. Um, but he's doing some good things, you know, and he, he's trying, you know, with fouls or not. I mean, I, I, like, I love the fact that he's not giving easy, uncontested layups. Wayne. Hey, Coach, tonight made the fourth game in a row you held a team under 100 points. What were you pleased with uh, from tonight's defensive effort from the team? Uh, well, overall, I think once we got, uh, you know, our defense – settled the transition was an issue some of that early in the in the uh, first half was turnovers and now you're on your heels so it's just tough to you know anchor your defense but once we got once we got uh, our defense set guys are in the right spots I thought we were pretty good you know uh, we were communicating pretty well uh, we were kind of getting through screens and guys were um, you know fighting to get back in front making it make it trying to make it tough um, mm -hmm. overall you know it, it wasn't perfect never is but I thought we did a decent job and lastly, Coach, uh, and take me back to the first quarter. It was, it was kind of slow. Trez comes in, just going to run. Uh, can you just speak to Trez's game tonight? Yeah, it's a, you know, it's once again, he's he's that energizer bunny. <laughs> he, and he can find it a lot of ways. Uh, we went to him in the post. He had some success down there. So we just kind of kept going to him, going to him. He, he got a couple of easy putbacks, uh, got one in transition. So, you know, once you see the ball go in, you know, once again, that helps your set your defense. But um, those paint points open up the floor a bit, you know, so now that uh, they're, they're digging down on him and worried about him scoring in the post, um, it opens up other things for us. Thanks a lot, Coach. Safe travels. Thank you. Go back to Chase. Uh, yeah, one more. Um, just Kuzma hitting four threes in like under six minutes the other game, the other day, and then uh, three in a span of about a minute tonight. Just how valuable is it to have a guy who can just go on a barrage like that in such a short period of time? No, oh, it's, it's, it's big for us, um, you know, and he's not the only one. I've seen Pope do it. Obviously, you know, we don't have Brad tonight, but Brad is certainly capable. Uh, Spencer's capable. Um, so just to have that volume of shooting and the fact that he's done it, um, there's a comfort level. Um, he hits a couple. You are right, you going to run something to get him another one. Uh, but, you know, in, in general, I like the fact that he's, he's aggressive. He's taking the, the right type of shots. He's not forcing it. Um, and if that ball is going in, it, it, you know, it's a backbreaker for the defense. Uh, just my confidence. Um, you know, like I said, the last game, I don't care about missing shots. Um, you know, because I, I'd rather just keep shooting and, and missing, if anything, because after the game, if I stop shooting at a certain point, I'm going to be mad at myself. So uh, I just try to keep that mentality of, you know, they'll fall eventually. And then, you know, once one goes in, that's all I really need to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I've been through a lot in this league. I've had a lot of highs, I had a few lows, um, won the championship, played, you know, whether being a first option, a second option third and and fourth even so you know I've seen the NBA in you know five years at um, you know different type of areas so you know I feel like uh, you know I have a lot of knowledge and um, you know we just got great young guys on this team that really want to learn and um, you know not saying that I'm a old vet but you know if I if I see something or uh, somebody has a question I'm answer it Well, you know, Denny doesn't really have a flashy game and, um, you know, doesn't really need to. He impacts the game so, so much. 
um, at a young age that, uh, you know, I just try to tell them, you know, through my experiences, um, you know, just stay with it. Just, just work on all the little things, you know, because in this league, um, you're always going to have the opportunity you want at some point. You just never really know when it's going to come. So, um, you know, I think for me, um, you know, saying that uh, the past two years, I just tried to work on my entire all game, doing the little things, defense, rebounding. And that's what he's doing right now. And he impacts the game for us every single night. Uh, Garden players, uh, he's a, uh, you know, a very underrated um, uh, rebounder. And um, he does a great job of just playing the right way and playmaking for others. You know, he gets downhill and uh, he makes the right pass ahead of him, uh, keeps it simple. And, um, you know, he, he's doing well this year. Uh, no, I didn't see that one. Yeah, I didn't see that one. They had it though. They were happy to see. Nice. Said again. Did you ask me a question? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, it was quiet. You know, saying I didn't know. I thought you were waiting on me. Got you. Yeah, it's all right. We all have bad days. I have more than most. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Chase. Hey, Kuz. Um, when you're playing a young team that, you know, maybe could sense an opportunity with players being out, what's the key to kind of preventing them from building confidence and, and getting into a game? Uh, well, when you know you play a very, very young team, you know that they're going to play hard no matter what. Um, and, and tonight was proof. You know, they kept around with us uh, up until that third quarter um, for the most part. And obviously, you know, I think we had like a 25-point lead or something. And to what I just said, they're going to play hard all night. And they got the game back um, little by little, and they didn't quit, and they scrapped the whole night. And, you know, when you're playing teams like that, you have to understand – um, you know, you can't play with your food. Um, you know, um, you know, you, yeah, you just can't play with your food at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you want to bury them early so they have no confidence. And um, what does having a, a lot of depth on a roster do to, like, the mindset of each individual player? Does it take any pressure off knowing that, like, you know, you don't need a select few to to have a big scoring night. Someone's going to come up with something. I mean, I think the biggest thing with depth in the, uh, in the NBA is, um, you know, what you saw tonight, you know, Brad didn't play. And it's a next man up mentality. And we were able to, you know, hang through and, and finish the game off uh, with a W. You know, I think that's the biggest thing in the league for depth. You know, for me, I think for the most part, you know, depth, depth is kind of overrated. but um, you know, in instances where you have players out, um, you got guys that can fill up and, and level up their games. It's huge. Chris. Hey, Kuz. Uh, t 10 rebounds tonight. Uh, that seems to be an area where you, you've kind of excelled since coming to Washington. Uh, what do you think's behind uh, the growth in that part of your game? Uh, you know, well, I've been uh, – you know, really focus on rebound more and more, um, you know, since last year. Um, I had to figure out a way last year to um, impact the game, you know, because I didn't really get that many touches. Um, and I think that was that was the way to impact the game um, offensively and defensively. And uh, it's huge, you know, without defense and rebounding, you're going to be a terrible team. So, uh, you know, I understand that. And, you know, just trying to help my team out any way I can within um, within those regards. Appreciate it. Last question, Neil. Hey, Kyle, we uh, saw that you signed and autographed your shoes and gave it to a young fan. I guess just, you know, generally – why is that important to you? And, you know, how does that, how is that special for you? Um, I mean, I, I, th I feel like for me, when I was a kid, um, I never got to go to NBA games. Uh, I was, I live really far from Piston, the, like Detroit Pistons. And 
Um, you know, I know that you never know when kids are, uh, whether it's their first game or mini games. And um, I think uh, as professional athletes, it's just our job to, you know, be entertainers and also role models. And, um, you know, you never know when you can make somebody's day. And um, that's important to me. So. I mean, obviously, uh, coach always puts us in spots to see based on our strengths. Um, I think they're a young group, um, so they play hard. But you know, obviously, sometimes they get out of position and things like that. And so, you know, changing sides of the floor, being patient, allows us to get uh, some good looks. Um, I mean, I think our attention to detail was there. I think our focus was there for the most part. Um, you know, obviously they helped us out a little bit as well. Um, yeah, I mean, ba basketball is an easy game. You got to just kind of do your job. Um, I mean, I, I think I pride myself on having a, a versatile skill set, um, being able to do what's necessary when called upon. And, you know, that's, that's going to constantly look different. Sometimes it's going to be assists, sometimes maybe rebounds, sometimes maybe get in the paint, sometimes maybe mid-range to to cut runs or to finish games. And, you know, sometimes you got the three working. It's, it's just uh, being able to be versatile and, you um, I think when you have a, a toolbox like that, that's that's probably why I'm not sped up. You know what I'm saying? Because I can get to where I need to get to when I want to. Uh, that I got a lot more to learn. It's an eclectic individual. Um, no, I mean, I think... Uh, you know, I, I made a couple of comments recently about, you know, him being able to be in the high teens, a, a possible double-double threat. I think, obviously, when he's playing um, catch and shoot and point five basketball, he's um, a, a great, you know what I'm saying, force for us. And I think we saw that tonight. You know what I'm saying? He had, what, three catch-shoot threes in a row, really uh, stretched out the game in the third quarter. Um, and so just knowing what everybody brings to the table. For sure. I mean, we all can see off the court. I mean, sometimes Kuz is, uh, you know, throwing uh, not no look passes, but look passes, and then like he throws it, the dude catches it, and then he looks away. It's like, oh. it's like that's that's not how a no look pass works, bro. But you know, he he's still he's still learning the nuances of of that side of things. Chase. Hey, man, uh, you're one of uh, several players on this team who's averaging a career high in rebounds this year. Um, for you individually, just what do you think has led to that uh, for you? Um, I mean, I think uh, commitment on it in, knowing, uh, you know, how our roster is, is shaped right now. Um, you know, in, in, in recent years, I, I mean, shoot, when I was a rookie, I played with Andre Drummond, one of the best rebounders of all time. Uh, then with the Nets, I played with DeAndre Jordan, one of the best rebounders of all time, and Jared Allen, who's not bad himself either. You know what I'm saying? So understanding one team makeup, and then I think the last couple of games, my matchup has lended itself to that. Uh, you know, we've had Pope guarding primary guys or, or Aaron tonight guarding primary guys. And so, you know, if my guy Jalen Suggs, for example, is in the corner tonight, uh, they, they shoot the ball. If he doesn't crash, you know, it's my job to get in there and help out. And so just able to get a couple more boards. And, uh, Coach Unseld called a timeout. You guys were down 15 to 12. And uh, from there, the game just completely turned around. Uh, what did he say in the huddle? Or, I mean, just like, what, what do you think changed for you guys after that? Oh, um, damn. He, I mean, he just, he, he does, he did what he does. He's a, he's a phenomenal coach. I think uh, he's great with his timeouts. He's great with his uh, play calling. Um, I mean, I don't remember what he said verbatim, but obviously it was the kick in the ass we needed, so. And uh, you've had your two best scoring games this year uh, in the two games that Brad's been out. Just kind of what has your approach been when he's out of the lineup and, and does your approach change at all? Oh, of course. 
I mean, obviously, y'all y'all kind of see it, right? Like, um, we monitor the game. We try to get Brad's shots, his looks. Got to get Kuz his looks, get Tress his looks. Um, if I'm always on Golden, like, there, there's not always much ball movement. There's only so many shots to go around. So somebody's going to have to sacrifice at some point in time. And then you see me get a little bit more aggressive in the fourth quarter when it's time to close and things, when the game gets a little tighter and some other, you know what I'm saying, types of actions aren't working. So, you know, there's, there's part of selfishness and just knowing it's going to come around. Obviously, when Brad's out, like I'm, I'm pushing the go button a little bit earlier, a little bit more often. Um, again, that kind of goes back to the question you had, right, where it's about not being sped up. Like, I feel like I can get a shot at any time. You know what I'm saying? That's not a question. So it's just about also, like, the psychology of our team. This is a more complicated game than just, like, you know, who shoots when and all that other stuff. Like, you know, if I if I come out there and let's say me and Brad both shoot 20 times a game, 40 shots, you know what I'm saying, in a game, and we only shoot 85 as a team, there's only 40 more, you know what I'm saying, in, in that game. Now is Kuz mad? Is, is Pope mad? Is, you know, all, all that other stuff. You feel me? Because Trez is going to get his 15, some of, some of it based off offensive rebounds, things like that. Now, obviously, after a couple of transition buckets, there's just not that many left. You know what I'm saying? So somebody's going to have to fall on the sword a little bit and understand that, like, for everybody to get their 10, it means that he can't have 20. And it's not going to be Brad, so I'm the next option. I think Ava had one more in person. Well, so remember, everybody has a specialty. Um, at the end of the day, my specialty is is the pick and roll. So that also needs its versatility. So think about it as a shooter, right? Like JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick is a cat. He was a catch shoot shooter first, but then he had to be able to come off screens and shoot on the move, and he had to be able to pump fake one dribble. You know what I'm saying? Still shoot. So it was all based off of that. If you look at most of my actions, they're still based off of pick and roll, but I just have to have the versatility in the different three levels of shot making have the right reads, throw the lob when the lob's ready, throw the skip pass when that's ready. So it's still based in a specialty. So that's how I'm not a jack of all trades, master of none. And then also, you know, my, my size and, and athleticism makes me a lot different than other point guards. You know what I'm saying? There's not many other PGs out there that are 6'6", six, six, you know what I'm saying? 6'10 wingspan, some probably just sub 40, 40 inch vert. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so just sub 40 vertical, you know what I'm saying, leap. But like, there's, there's just not many people out there. So... That's how, you know what I'm saying, you use your burst when you need to. Like, I have Mo Bomb on the ISO. Use your burst, get by him. Uh, sorry, I'm starting to get into it, so I'm thinking about it. Or then, like, you get maybe uh, when I had, like, shoulder, you take him to the block a little bit. Like, it's, it's just knowing your matchups, knowing where your strength is at, and then, you know, manipulating the game to where, where you need to get it at, at what time. 